Hey everybody, it's Kevin Weiss from BodyPerformance.net, brought to you by Riptone Fitness Products. And today we're going to talk about uh, a basics of powerlifting, if you will, kind of a powerlifting 101. What you need to have as far as equipment goes, and some of the things that you probably need to know before you actually enter a powerlifting competition. So this is just going to be a real basic overview of stuff that's going to be helpful to you and also stuff that is required. So before you even begin to powerlift, I would recommend that you, if possible, talk to somebody in person that actually has some experience uh, in several competitions. Not somebody that's done one or two, but somebody that's done a pretty good number of competitions so that they have a little bit of experience and they can guide you along the way when it comes to making decisions about what kind of equipment you want to you want to have uh, what federation you might want to compete in as there's several and the rules do vary slightly from from one to another some have drug testing some do not have drug testing so that can make a massive difference in in the competition that you're up against so it's always a good idea to seek out someone that has a little bit of experience and kind of pick their brain for for basic information so beyond that you're going to need a certain minimum a level of equipment and to actually compete in a powerlifting competition you don't need to have a lot of supportive or or specialty type equipment the only thing that's actually 100 percent required that you're going to have to buy an approved brand in most in most federations is a powerlifting singlet which is like a wrestling singlet but is going to be made by an approved brand in the ipf that's going to mean spd inzer titan a7 uh, there's a few others as well but if you show up to the competition and your singlet is not approved, uh, they're not going to allow you to compete unless you can borrow one that is approved from someone else or, or something like that. And that can be a little more stress than you really need on the, on the day of your first competition. So make sure beforehand you know the rules of the Federation as far as what equipment is allowed, what brands are allowed and you make sure that the singlet that you get is going or any other equipment that you get is going to fall under those guidelines now beyond that there's certain like you have to wear shoes you have to wear socks you have to wear underwear um, but none of those have to be an actual approved brand there is some regulations on 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 underwear and stuff like that you can't have um, long legs on the underwear and, and various other things like that all of these things will be covered in the rule book of the Federation so it's a good idea you can download that from the from the internet and just have a read through about what the actual specifications of your equipment are your shoes they don't have to be any certain brand but there is regulations on how high the heel can be and, and whatnot so you want to look at that you must have knee-high socks for the deadlift and that's just to stop people from scraping their shins up and getting blood on there. But the so socks at this time don't have to be any specific brand. And then we're getting into other stuff that is probably recommended to have, but not required. And that would be a belt. You obviously are going to get a benefit from having a belt. Your belt will have to be approved by the same, it has to be from one of the approved companies. But you don't have to wear a belt if you choose not to. Knee wraps or, or knee sleeves and wrist wraps, they fall under that same idea. If you choose to wear them, they must be approved by that federation, but they're not required. A lot of times that I've competed, I've competed with no belt, no, no sleeves, no wrist wraps, or a combination of those things where I've worn a belt only or I've worn sleeves only or, or whatever. So. You have some leeway on what you actually uh, choose to wear and what you choose to train in and I recommend that you don't train in something that you're not going to wear on the on the platform so that's just real basic as far as the equipment that you're that you're going to need now you want to make sure that and part of that is talking to someone that knows a little bit about it 
you want to make sure that you're training for powerlifting. And people may think that that means doing a lot of heavy singles and stuff like that, and that definitely isn't true. You may do some heavy singles in the few weeks right before the meet, but a lot of the training in powerlifting isn't that much different than bodybuilding. It just gets progressively lower volume towards the competition with lower reps and higher weight, but not necessarily down to singles. You may, just as an example, if someone's doing an eight week cycle, they might start with sets of eight and work their way down to sets of two over over eight weeks and then a, a, uh, some singles at the end and they're peaked and they're ready to go. So you wanna make sure that you're, you're training for what you're actually going to compete in. And that also means making sure that you're following the rules of each of the lift and that's each of the lifts and that comes from the rule book and stuff that'll be explained. That'll also come from talking to someone that's got some experience. All of the lifts have specific parameters that must be met you may be strong enough to lift the weight but if you don't meet these parameters like with the squat for example if your top of your of your knee does not the the crease of your hip does not drop below the top of your knee you're going to get red lighted for not going deep enough on your squat so you may be more than strong enough and you're doing these lifts but you've never uh, trained in that manner you've always squatted a little bit higher um to try and change that the day of the competition is very hard and you're gonna you're gonna get red lights for for that so you want to make sure that you're training in the same in the same way that you're actually going to be competing in so that's probably basically all i want to talk about right now for for the actual bare minimum of stuff that you want to do if you're going to do a competition you want to, there's a, there's a lot more stuff that could, we could go into, but this video would be a half an hour long if we did that. So just to recap, find somebody that knows something, somebody that has experience in many competitions, not someone that's done one competition or something like that. We want someone that has, has quite a few competitions under their belt and they can give you a little bit of guidance as far as what federation to, to go into, which competition to compete in, what weight class you want to be in, all these different things that are, are going to be fairly easy for them to get the information across to you and you're not going to have to be just kind of guessing at what you're doing. Get the rule book, make sure that you know the rules of the federation that you're competing in and that goes for the execution of the lifts as well as the equipment that you're choosing to wear and are allowed to wear. And beyond that, just uh, don't get too crazy with your your program selection. If you have somebody that's that's experienced, then they can help you with a get a program going. That's great. But beyond that, even on the internet, there's many many free programs. And to be honest, the more simple the program, usually the better it is. Especially if you're brand new to the sport. I feel more people need to concentrate on actually getting technically proficient at the lifts than having some sort of a really wild program that has a thousand different variables that they have to consider and track in, in every workout. If you keep it simple and you keep it consistent and you make sure you're following the rules of the Federation, that's going to give you a pretty good head start and uh, allow you to have fun at your first competition and then move on from there deciding whether you want to continue on or not. I'm Kevin Weiss from BodyPerformance.net, brought to you by Riptone Fitness Products. Hope this helps you out. I'll talk to you again real soon.